Hello everyone. So today we will be discussing about a topic called torticollis or wry neck. So coming to introduction, it is derived from a Latin word tortis which means twisted and colum which means neck. So the literal meaning is twisted neck. Torticollis is a condition wherein the neck is twisted or turned to one side. It occurs more frequently in children than adults. Okay, so before getting into the topic, some relevant anatomy regarding the condition. We need to know the origin, insertion, nerve supply and action of the particular muscle related to this condition that is the sternocleidomastoid. So the origin of the muscle being it has two heads. The sternal head originates from the manubrium sterni whereas the clavicular head originates from the middle third of the clavicle. The insertion is the lateral surface of the mastoid process of the temporal bone and the lateral half of the superior nuchal line of the occipital bone. The nerve supply being the accessory nerve and the action is when the muscle is acting alone it rotates the head to the opposite side that is the contralateral side and it flexes the head on the same side. It is also known as the accessory muscle of inspiration. So this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Moving on. Nature of deformity. So how do you see a patient who has torticollis? Like when a patient come across you, what is the thing which you notice is? The presentation of the patient would be the head tilted to the affected side and the chin pointing towards the contralateral side. The shoulder on the affected side is raised and there is facial asymmetry which may develop in the later stages. So as we can see in this picture, this is a normal presentation and this is the cototicolis presentation. The first point what we saw was when the person bends to one side, the chin is pointing to the opposite or the contralateral side. So that is the first point which we saw and the shoulder is slightly raised on the affected side compared to the unaffected side. So these are few changes which you can or the nature of deformity which you can see. Now causes of torticollis. So mainly there are two types and there are different causes for both of them that is congenital torticollis and acquired torticollis. First we would see about the congenital torticollis. Congenital torticollis or congenital muscular torticollis is a condition caused due to unilateral contraction of the sternocleidomastoid muscle since birth. It is seen in 0.3 to 1.9 of all births. Causes of CMT. There are various causes of CMT starting from intrauterine growth restriction to SCM tumor. So what do I mean by intrauterine growth restriction? It is a condition where the baby does not grow to a normal size or the baby does not present normally. Why is that? So there are various causes for intrauterine growth restriction but some of them include placental abnormalities, high blood pressure in the mother, infections and smoking or alcohol abuse leads to such a condition. Malposition of the head in the womb. Traumatic delivery and SCM tumor. So I'll be showing you a few pictures in the further slides. So as we can see there are two pictures. This is picture 1 and this is picture 2. In picture 1 you can see few mal positions of the baby in the uterine and in the picture 2 you can see some of the traumatic birth. Breach being the most common condition which we come across can lead to torticollis if there is an traumatic birth while delivering. So breach is a very common condition which we can see and it can lead to torticollis if there is a traumatic birth given. Now coming to shoulder in shoulder as we can see the representation of child is quite unusual and then as we can see it is one side the child is putting all the weight the head is tilted to one side and is compressed so in such a cases there is high chances of the 
child having torticollis. So children with CMT can be subdivided into three clinical groups. Group 1, Group 2 and Group 3. In Group 1, the condition or how the patient would present or how the child would present is he would be having stiffness and swelling or some palpable tumor. In group 2, that is muscular torticollis, there would be tightness but no tumor or no swelling present. In group 3, there is no stiffness or there is no tumor seen. So in the first group, there is stiffness and palpable tumor. In group 2, there is stiffness but is there, there is no palpable tumor and in the group 3, there is neither stiffness nor palpable tumor, hence it is called postural, post-postural. After attaining certain posture for a longer period of time, you might see such a condition. Characteristic features of torticollis, mild frontal flattening. So what do I mean by mild frontal flattening? With continuous unilateral weight bearing, with continuous unilateral weight bearing, the skull base and the cranium deform into such a shape so that the vertex reveals as a parallelogram shaped head. We will be seeing the parallelogram shaped head in further slides. But all you need to remember is unilateral weight bearing, the head changes into a parallelogram type shaped. Then there's smaller and higher eye, elevated, cup here. You will know why smaller and higher higher eye in the upcoming slides, depressed neck. So these are some of the characteristic features of torticollis. So that was about congenital muscular torticollis where we saw the causes of it, the clinical stages of it and some of the characteristic features. Now coming to acquired torticollis, cervical dystonia is another name which can be given for acquired torticollis and in this condition it is frequently associated with pain. So moving on, cervical dystonia, also known as acquired torticollis, is a focal abnormality of the muscle tone. It is characterized by involuntary contraction of the neck muscles, abnormal neck movements, and an awkward posture of the head and neck. It is frequently associated with the pain in the muscle. Coming to the causes of acquired torticollis, there are various causes such as infection, neurogenic and ocular causes, everything. Coming to infection, tonsillitis and atlantoaxial infection. Remember one thing, here in causes, that is the acquired torticollis, torticollis will be seen as the secondary cause, that is, it will be seen as a symptom for any condition present. For example, tonsillitis. So basically what is tonsillitis? That is inflammation of the tonsils. So tonsillitis can be complicated by a retropharyngeal abscess. In normal tonsillitis, we do not see a person having torticollis. But when can we see a person having torticollis in tonsillitis is when it gets complicated. And when does it get complicated? When we see a retropharyngeal abscess. Now what is a retropharyngeal abscess? A retropharyngeal abscess is a collection of pus in the back of the throat. It causes cervical pain, torticollis, swelling, inability to extend the neck and striders. So there are a lot of conditions associated with tonsillitis. Atlanto Atlantoaxial infection, as I said, torticollis will be a symptom in such a case. Coming to neurogenic, spasmodic condition. By spasmodic condition, I mean any spasm. Any spasm leading to torticollis, like spasm of the sternocleidomastoid muscle or paralysis of the muscle leading to torticollis. Few other causes, ocular compensation, compensation of the squint. I would have the picture in the next slides which you can see. Now coming to other causes, rheumatoid arthritis, that is RA of the cervical spine may also lead to torticollis and spasmodic torticollis. So as I said, compensation of squint so you can see there is a squint here and the compensation of squint is leading to torticollis like condition or torticollis condition 
and this is exactly how a torticollis person is usually seen. Coming to clinical features, this is in general I'll be talking about clinical features seen in both congenital and acquired torticollis. Plagiocephaly is reported in up to 90% cases of CMT in children. Pain, tenderness in the neck, asymmetry in the neck, difficulty to move the neck, tremors in the neck region, difficulty in performing shoulder movements and thickening of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So I guess from the point 2 till the point 8, it is all self-explanatory. That is pain, tenderness, asymmetry, difficulty, tremors. These are all self-understandable. What we need to teach or what we need to concentrate on is the plagiocephaly. What is plagiocephaly? More than half of the babies who have torticollis have a flat spot on the affected side of the head that is called deformational plagiocephaly. It is caused by continuous pressure on one side of the base of the skull as we had seen in the previous slides. Plagiocephaly, also known as flat head syndrome, is a condition characterized by an asymmetrical distortion or parallelogram shaped skull. As we mentioned, both the points that is unequal weight bearing and parallelogram type head is nothing but plagiocephaly. So we would see a picture of it. So this is how a normal head or normal head image and this is a positional plagiocephaly where you can see a flattening. Diagnostic criteria. The main key point in the diagnostic criteria is history taking. When I mean evaluation begins with history taking, I mean you need to his take the history in such a way from the uterine position of the babies, how was the baby's alignment in the uterus, how was the baby delivered, whether it was a traumatic birth or normal birth, what was the condition of the baby afterwards, how did this develop, from when did you start noticing it? So it has to be a thorough history taking. Then physical examination. What I mean by physical examination is the checking the range of motion of head and neck and palpating whether you can find some swelling or tumor. As we saw, there are three clinical stages. The first one being with stiffness and palpable swelling or tumor. The second case, there's only stiffness. There is no swelling or tumor. And the third case, there is no stiffness nor any tumor present. So you need to palpate the muscle and check for all these things. Radiographs and MRI are just for clearing your diagnosis. MRI. So this is the picture. The first picture is of an MRI. The second and the third picture is of the radiographs. So this is the MRI where we can see the torticollis present or the flexion of the neck towards one side and here we can see the clearly we can see the abnormality present so this is how we see in x-rays and mris so that is it for the part one in part two since the management is a little vast i'll be taking the management in part two